Did you know that something unusual is happening on our blue planet? A type of unusual weather change is creating the most powerful fluctuation in Earth's climatic system. Do we need to worry? Is the situation alarming? Welcome to the Space Tech Gazette. Today's video is about an ongoing climate change that is adding heat to our already warming planet. And it has already begun in the Pacific Ocean. El Nino is a weather pattern that happens when the water at the surface of the eastern Pacific Ocean becomes warmer than usual. This warming is happening right now in the Pacific Ocean. This phenomenon demands attention because it's contributing to the increased warmth of our planet, which is already experiencing rising temperatures due to global warming. El Nino is a result of some irregular and complicated changes in Earth's climate. It happens every few years and impacts the equatorial Pacific region and beyond. During this event, warm water, which is poor in nutrients, appears from northern Peru and Ecuador, usually in late December. El Nino means little boy in Spanish. It was first identified when South American fishermen observed abnormally warm periods in the Pacific Ocean back in the 1600s. They named it El Nino de Navidad, which means little boy of Christmas. That's because El Nino usually reaches its highest point around December. This weather effect leads to various effects, such as the reversal of wind patterns across the Pacific, lack of rain in Australasia, and unusually heavy rainfall in South America. But what is the cause of El Nino? Why does it happen? During normal conditions in the Pacific Ocean, trade winds blow westward along the equator, carrying warm water from South America to Asia. This movement is balanced by cold water rising from the ocean depths, a process known as upwelling. However, El Nino and La Nina are two climate patterns that disrupt these normal conditions. While El Nino is all about the warm surface waters, La Nina deals with the cold waters. La Nina is an oceanic and atmospheric phenomenon that is the colder counterpart of El Nino. La Nina and El Nino are part of a larger climate pattern. Scientists refer to this pattern as the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. The El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, has three main phases, hot, cold, or neutral. And El Nino is the hot phase, which happens every two to seven years. During this hot phase, warm water surfaces off the coast of South America and spreads across the ocean. This process releases a lot of heat into the atmosphere. Both El Nino and La Nina can cause widespread effects on global weather, wildfires, ecosystems, and economies. Episodes of these two usually stick around for about 9 to 12 months, although occasionally they can extend for several years. Though these events happen every 2 to 7 years, there's no fixed schedule for when they occur. Typically, El Nino tends to happen more often than La Nina. In El Nino, the trade winds, which usually blow from east to west along the equator, become weaker. This causes warm water to shift eastward, moving toward the west coast of the Americas. El Nino has a big impact on our weather. The warmer waters make the fast-moving air current, the Pacific Jet Stream, shift south from its neutral position. Because of this change, regions in the northern U.S. and Canada become drier and warmer than usual. On the other hand, the U.S. Gulf Coast and Southeast experience more rain than usual during these times, leading to increased flooding. El Nino significantly impacts marine life along the Pacific Coast. Under regular circumstances, a process called upwelling brings cold and nutrient-rich water from the depths to the surface. However, during El Nino, this upwelling weakens or stops completely. The reduction in nutrients means there is a lesser amount of phytoplankton near the coast. Haven't heard the term phytoplankton before? No worries. Phytoplankton are tiny, plant-like organisms in the water. They're so small that you can't see them without a microscope. These organisms play a crucial role at the bottom of the marine food chain. They float along with water currents, forming the foundation of the marine ecosystem. This affects fish that feed on phytoplankton, creating a ripple effect on the entire food chain. So, it is this phytoplankton that gets depleted during El Nino, which is indeed a matter of concern. Moreover, the warmer waters associated with El Nino can attract tropical species, such as yellowtail and albacore tuna, into regions that are usually too cold for them. 
This adds another layer of change to the usual marine ecosystems. Scientists in the U.S. have confirmed that El Nino has already begun. Oh no! We'll tell you more about that in a jiffy. But if this journey by now ignited your curiosity, remember to like and comment on what you think of El Nino. And don't forget to subscribe because your support fuels our mission to bring you the latest news about space. Back to the matter at hand. Experts are concerned that this development will probably lead to 2024 becoming the hottest year globally. There is apprehension that it might contribute to surpassing a critical warning point of 1.5 degrees Celsius. The effects of El Nino are expected to influence worldwide weather patterns, potentially causing drought in Australia, increased rainfall in the southern United States, and a weakening of India's monsoon. This weather event is likely to persist until the following spring, after which its impacts are anticipated to diminish. For months, scientists have been increasingly confident that El Nino would emerge in the Pacific Ocean. This natural occurrence brings the most powerful change in the Earth's climate system. Years with exceptionally high temperatures like 2016, which holds the record as the hottest globally, often occur the year after a strong El Nino effect. Various weather agencies worldwide use different standards to determine when this warm phase is happening. In the United States, scientists define it as the ocean being 0.5 degrees Celsius warmer than usual for a month, with observable atmospheric reactions to this heat and clear signs that the event is continuing. The scientists think there is an 84% probability that this phenomenon will become quite strong by the end of this year. They also suggest a 1 in 4 chance that it might go beyond 2 degrees Celsius at its strongest point, reaching the level of a Super El Nino. Though the effects of El Nino may take a few months to manifest, they are anticipated to have global repercussions. So yeah, we need to be prepared for drier weather conditions in Australia and parts of Asia, as well as the potential weakening of the monsoon in India. The southern U.S. states are luckier though, they will likely be wetter in the coming winter. Similarly, Africa will also benefit from this phenomenon, as El Nino typically strengthens drought conditions in Africa. Okay, so we clearly know what is coming our way in terms of weather in this coming year. But what about the global economy? Are we going to face challenges there as well? Based on past experiences, there is a significant impact on both human and economic costs due to the upcoming weather event. During the robust El Nino in 1997 and 1998, the cost exceeded $5 trillion and approximately 23,000 lives were lost due to storms and floods. Currently, global temperatures are about 1.1 degrees Celsius higher than the average between 1850 and 1900. However, if the El Nino event occurs, it could contribute an additional 0.2 degrees Celsius to that figure. This would bring the world into unfamiliar temperature territory, approaching the critical 1.5 degrees Celsius limit outlined in the Paris Climate Agreement. Recently, researchers mentioned that it's quite possible we'll exceed the critical temperature limit for a short period in the coming years. Scientists anticipate that the global average temperatures, which might cross this limit temporarily, could become more frequent in the next 5 to 10 years. This gives us a glimpse into what the future might look like. This situation is concerning to some people because these temperature levels are like new boundaries and El Nino is making the process faster like an accelerant. In the coming years, the boundaries of global temperatures may be tested and the acceleration brought on by El Nino will serve as a stark reminder of the need for dedicated efforts to address climate change. While challenges lie ahead, proactive measures, informed decision-making, and global collaboration can mitigate the impacts of El Nino and pave the way for a more sustainable and resilient future. As we navigate the stormy waters of climate uncertainty, our preparedness and collective actions will determine how well we weather the challenges that lie ahead. That concludes our journey with the El Nino right here on the Space Tech Gazette. If you want to know more about some of the most amazing science news, space facts, or technologies out there, you can watch one of these videos next. And as always, keep gazing at the stars, for the cosmos is a boundless source of wonder.